Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant Hi, I'm Jackie, and I want to welcome you back to my home and to my channel, Hearth and Apron. Now, on Hearth and Apron, I like to make homemaking and lifestyle content to help motivate you to get through your everyday tedious tasks. And I also like to have some to inspire you to just have a little bit of fun. And that's what today's episode is, because I will be sharing with you my 2020 fall bucket list. And not only am I going to share the bucket list with you, I'm going to show you a couple of the ideas of how I checked off my bucket list as well as offer a free printable version in the description down below of the bucket list that I am using today so that you can go ahead and do it with me. Now, as I said earlier, I didn't happen to get through all of the items on my bucket list, but I will be continuing to go through them. And if you would like to stay up and see a little bit more of what I'm doing, I'm gonna really encourage you to go find me on Instagram at Hearth and Apron, and you will see a lot more motivating content there, a lot of day-to-day -day stuff, and you'll also kind of get a little bit of a heads up on what's coming up on my channel. Now, if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button down below, please do. I really hope that you will join my YouTube family and that don't, if you do, don't forget to let me know where you're from and a little bit about you down below because I just want to get to know you and help our community grow in a wonderful way. Now, if you are back, I would really just like to say to you, thank you so very much. Your continued support means so much to me. There's just not going to ever be enough words to express my gratitude. So thank you so much. Now enough jibber jabbering. Let's go ahead and get into this bucket list, guys. So here's my list and I hope that it inspires you to go out and have some extra fall fun. As you can see, it starts out with have a bonfire, roast s'mores, enjoy a yummy fall beverage, take family pictures, nature walk or drive, signs of for fall search, outdoor movie night, spa night or self-care night, gratitude gifts, go stargazing, fall baking, make warm soup or chili, and curl up with a book or your favorite series. All of these things to me just say that cozy fall essence, and that's why I decided to add them to the list. I hope that you enjoy this, and don't forget, it's available for free as a printable down below. Puts a smile up on my face They leave their branches one by one And whirl around there just for fun So the first fun idea that we checked off that I want to show you actually checked off three items of my list. Um, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get to do them all in the same night, so I did list them separately. Anyways, I'm going to show you how I went ahead and set up our outdoor movie where we later had a bonfire and s'mores and watched the movie Coraline. Now, I know not everybody has a projector to take a movie outside, but I want to let you know that I was doing this long before I had one. I used to actually undo my television and take it out and put it on a table, just because I feel like sometimes that extra change up of scenery can really help out, and I think that that's especially true right now during everybody staying at home because of COVID. Dancing through the last days of September As you can see, I'm just kind of setting up a little bit of an area to put our food and just kind of to have a little extra nice appeal. These two signs are signs that we had made in a previous episode and they're just kind of to help spruce up our movie nights. And I decided to add a little bit of a fall swag as well, just because why not, right? And you'll see that I kind of set up a little bit of the candy and some mores. Later tonight, I will bring out our dinner and a couple drinks and other things for us to have on this table. But I don't want to leave them up here right now because I don't want the dogs to get to them. After this, we are going to go ahead and set up our little seating area. We have these really nice, slightly reclining chairs. And I'm just going to bring out some pillows and blankets. So in case it gets a little bit chilly tonight, we're totally covered. Come to my table, come to my bed, go easy my hunger, easy my head, bringing me fire, bringing me water, taking me high. 
taking me down Give me your pretty, give me your messy Give me your happy, give me your sad I may be staying, I may hey guys. be so we are still outside watching Coraline, but I had to come inside and wash my hands because OMG, I forgot why I didn't like s'mores and now I remember because I think I just ate more sugar than I have eaten in the last decade, guys. Like, I don't get it. Some more at your own peril, ladies. That's intense. Furthermore, beware the giant marshmallow. I was thinking more is better. Nah. -uh. Just get the damn small marshmallows, ladies. That shit's intense. Not only is it gonna be intense when you eat it, but when you're cleaning it off, your kids have, look, there's still chocolate. <sighs> Seriously, it's edible. And I'm an adult. Think about it. Beware the big marshmallow and some more at your own peril. Fire bringing me water, taking me high, taking me down. Next on the list, enjoy a yummy fall beverage. Now there are several beverages that I really enjoy in the fall season, including a good hot chai or a nice mocha. But right now I want to let you know about how my family likes to make homemade apple cider. And I want to share the recipe with you. You can see that I have a little recipe card that's up here, and I actually am doing all of the recipes in this episode a little bit differently. I have these recipe cards to print and available for you for free down in the description. That way it's a little easier and you can enjoy the actual scene of me cooking as opposed to me talking over every single second. Now in this I use one cinnamon, well you're supposed to use one cinnamon stick, a quarter teaspoon of cardamom, and and that's whole cardamom, by the way, and 11 apples. In the film, you will see that I use ground. Please don't do that. You will find it just doesn't end up well. Someone ends up with a whole bunch of spices in their mouth, no matter how well you try to strain. And you're also gonna see that I could not find the top to my Braville juicer, so I had to like fish out all of the foam and everything that the juicer makes into the juice on my own. And that really sucked, because normally I just pour it in and it looks like it came straight from the store. But Either way, I hope that you enjoy this recipe and try it out. If you do, don't forget to let me know on Instagram. Next on the list is to take care of your family photos. Make sure to get it done now because once the holidays get started, it gets harder and harder to get it done. Now we went ahead to a local trail and I'll show you a sneak peek of how some of the photos of me turned out, but I'm going to wait to show you my family photos until a little bit later in the holiday season. But make sure you go out and get this done guys, time goes by so swiftly and you'd be surprised how quickly things change. Up next is one of my favorite fall activities and it's a simple one, it's just making a warm pot of soup or chili. And right now I'm going to show you how I make Zupa Toscana. It is inspired from Olive Garden and I don't know if you've ever had the soup before but when my daughter was little she actually used to call it ratatouille soup which I thought was super cute so it's a family favorite for us. But the recipe is available in a note card down below in the description. I'm not going to go over everything that I do because it is way easier for you to be able to look at the recipe itself. Now, one thing that I did want to point out that I thought was funny is as I was editing all of this stuff, I was watching This Crazy Life with Amanda and I noticed a couple weeks ago she did her own version of Zupa Toscana soup and I thought that that was really funny and it kind of showed like that everybody's in the like-minded vibe, but she did have a different recipe. So if you are looking to try something else and maybe try two different ways of something, Make sure to check out Amanda's episode. I will link it down below so you can try her Zupa Toscana as well. But please, if you do try mine, make sure to put it on Instagram. I wanna see your pictures of how it turned out. This soup is freaking amazing, guys.
Okay, so for our last recipe today, and the last thing that I'm going to show you that we worked on to do for our bucket list, is I'm going to show you how I make spiced sugar cookies. Now this is a sugar cookie recipe that was originally adapted from The Girl Who Eats Everything. And I really enjoy this cookie recipe, not only because they're soft sugar cookies, but also because they are not too excessively sweet if you do not add any frosting. And I'm really not into it if it's too sweet, so that's really exciting for me. I've done these cookies for years and in so many ways. I've done them in multiple colors and turned them into a spiral. I've made cut sugar cookies. I've done drop cookies. These, this recipe is just so incredibly versatile. And I also wanna say thank you to my friend Catherine because she is the one that showed this to me about 10 years ago, I think, or maybe more. And I have just had so much success with it. So I hope that this recipe gives you just as much success as it has given me. And I'm gonna show you what I go ahead and do. So this is our recipe card for the spiced sugar cookies. It is available just like the other ones down below in that fall 2020 recipes. And I hope that you really enjoy this one. These are some of my favorite cookies and I don't like excessively sweet cookies. I grew up in a home with a diabetic. So if it's really sweet, it's just not for me. I really recommend you guys trying this out. They are fantastic with coffee and tea and just in general. You should never doubt it. I am the forgotten you, you're the one on my mind And I could spend the winter too, as long as I am there with you Cause you're the one on my mind You should never doubt it's true, I am the forgotten you, you're the one on my mind And I could spend the winter once that cookie dough is done, I'm gonna transfer it over to this parchment paper. And that is because this cookie dough still feels a little bit sticky and moist. And it is supposed to, don't worry. But you're gonna go ahead and get it into the shape that you want. If you're going to be cutting cookies, put it between two sheets at the desired um, thickness that you'd like. Or I will be actually making kind of like a log and then cutting little round cookies. So I'll be making a tube. Anyways, once this is done, you kind of wrap it up and put it into the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes. Then you pull it out get it cut and cook these in the oven. I cooked these and mine were kind of small for five to six minutes at 350 degrees. Now you may have been wondering what was that thing about gratitude gifts? Well that's actually what we're going to be using these cookies for. We are going to be giving them out to a couple of our friends and so I just went ahead and made these little itty bitty labels on Canva and I cut them out and I'm going to put them on another piece of cardstock so they just look a little bit more professional I feel like and maybe tomorrow or the next day I am just going to go ahead and drop all of these off as a surprise gift on just a couple of our friends doorsteps so that we can still express to them that we love them and we care even though we can't see them face to face and it's really important right now to check up on your loved ones because there are a lot of people that are really suffering from this alone time and it can be really helpful just to have someone reach out with cookies or just with a simple text that says hello you'd be surprised how much that can mean to someone but you still dance with me when the party is over So I just went ahead and used the fall sprinkles that I had in my tiered tray in coffee bar area to sprinkle on top of these cookies. And it turned out wonderful. It gave them just that little extra bit of sweetness that they needed. I really hope that you try out this recipe. Let me know down below if you do and what you think. Also, do you guys like how I have made recipe cards instead of describing each individual step, or would you guys prefer me to continue to describe each step?
I hope you really enjoyed today's episode and that you really liked this list and don't forget that it is a free printable down below. Let me know if you decide to try out any of these ideas or if you have tried out any of these already. And also, let me know what are you planning to do for fall this year? I'd love to learn more about you and to get new fall ideas for myself as well. Now, before we close this up though, I wanted to go over a couple of the things that we didn't get to check off. And first and foremost, remind you to follow me on Instagram so that you can see more fun content, including some more ideas for the things on this list. But some of the things that I noticed that we didn't have a chance to check off with have kind of a similar essence. For instance, looking for the signs of fall. Now, this is something that we used to do with my daughter all the time when she was little. We would just go take a walk. This doesn't even, you don't need to go very far from your home. Just go outside, go for a walk, and just look for the simple signs. Look for the first changing leaves for the animals gathering nuts. You will be surprised at how many little sib signals that fall is coming that you can find just by observing the things around you. Now, you can do this by walking around your neighborhood, or you can check off another one by going on a nature drive or a nature walk. Now, these are all really fun and exciting things, and I feel like they really help to feed the soul in a way that only nature can, as well as the stargazing. All of them kind of cause you to just slow down for a second and be in the present, which can be really hard at times. Now, the other things that we didn't get to do, I felt were pretty much self-care. So I had suggested a spa night or and or curling up with a book or your favorite series. Now, I think these things are really essential for us to do right now. And I want to implore you, if you don't do anything else on this list, take a self-care night. The holidays are coming with COVID and everything being so slow for a while. When things start to pick back up, it is just going to feel like things are just spiraling and going so quickly. Take the time while you have it now. Give yourself a little bit of that really needed self-care. Now, whether or not you want to do it with a spa night where you do face masks and pedicures and do the whole works, or maybe you just want to curl up with a book or watch your favorite series, or maybe you just want to sit and stare into the void. Totally the right answer. The most important thing is that you take a minute for you. Now anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that it really inspired you to get into that fall spirit and to have a little bit of fun. Again, don't forget to let me know what you think down below. And if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, now's the time people. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any of the fun and you get all the little notices when it comes up. I hope that you have an absolutely magical weekend and I just wanna thank you for joining me again today. Have a great one.